Hello, today I'm excited to share with you highlights from my new book, Yumeji Modern, Designing the Everyday in 20th Century Japan. Takesa Yumeji, the modern Japanese artist, was an emblematic figure. His graphic works developed in tandem with the emerging mediascape of the 1900s and 1910s, when novel forms of reprographic media were enabling the creation of new spaces for visual culture and image circulation. Highlights from Yumeji Modern is divided into two separate videos. The first one, this one, will cover the artist and his larger significance, including the making of the Yumeji style. Then I will talk about the start of his artistic career with illustrations for socialist bulletins, which holds the key to understanding his other works. This roughly corresponds uh, to the content from the introduction to chapter two in my book. The second video will consider the role of the mediascape in the larger context of the early 20th century Japan and how Yumeji's engagement with mass media uh, was important for his own artistic development as well as others in the more official fine arts spheres. In doing so, I will cover the works of the Tsukuhaya artists who worked along with Yumeji. Finally, I will discuss Yumeji's series, Sketches of the Earthquake Disasters, a culmination point for his images of beauties, political stance, and everything in between. And this roughly corresponds to the content from the chapters three to five in my book. Yumeji's works range from illustrations in socialist bulletins with images of anti-war and leftist sentiment, to wrenching portrayals of the devastation and rebuilding of Tokyo after the Great Kanto Earthquake of 1923, and to fashionable images of beautiful women, even referred to as the Yumeji style beauties or Yumeji Shiki Bijin in books and magazines targeting a female audience. Yumeji's images are ubiquitous, even canonical, yet conspicuously absent from most discussions of modern Japanese art. His subject matter is frivolous and mundane, at the same time serious and profound. Both apolitical and political, he remained outside official art spheres despite his influence. An artist of many contradictions who defies art historical definition, Yumeji occupied a different space in Japanese visual and cultural history at a time when official definitions of art were being formed. In many ways, his art offers a perfect lens through which to examine this particular moment in early 20th century Japan, one that coincided with the rise in new types of reprographic technology, emerging concept of the fine arts, and concepts of design and designer that were taking shape. Yumeji curated his own image as a media entrepreneur as his works proliferated in mass media and became a recognizable brand. His ongoing legacy and cult-like following even today speak to the broader implications of his work with respect to the integration of artistic and commercial spheres, the place of the print medium in modern Japanese art and visual culture, and other aspects of design, popular culture, media, and literature. Yumeji Modern is the first holistic study of Yumeji's artistry in its effort to unify the multiple discursive and social frameworks within which his images were animated with meaning, and to analyze his role within the media environment of the late 19th to early 20th centuries. Discussion surrounding the Yumeji Shiki, or Yumeji style, deals with women both as subject matter and as audience. Yumeji's bijinga, or images of beauties, quickly became a recognizable type, thought after and idolized by many women and girls. One of his most iconic bijinga images is this painting, Kurofuneya, which conveys both the attainable female type and the unattainable female ideal. The painting exhibits characteristics associated with the Yumeji Shiki bijin which would have been immediately recognizable by a contemporary audience, and even for us today, with its single figure composition, dainty pose, and vacant melancholic facial expression. 
Such images were popular within the larger context of the Taisho period, when emerging female types, such as the Atarashi Onna, new woman, or Modangaru, modern girl, became the object of discourse and visual representation. Yumeji's Bijinga provided an entry point for his female consumers to project their own identities onto images of ordinary girls who were given central focus in his works. This fostered a feeling of community of girlhood, and girls were avid consumers of the Yumeji Shiki brand. The term Yumeji style or Yumeji Shiki had a life of its own outside of the picture plane and had extended to defining actual types of women on the streets. An account from 1911 reads, there was a guy in the South Dormitory who would peer out of his second floor window and whisper, hey, there goes a Yumeji style gal. In fact, during those days, the schoolgirls would all frolic about trying to become the Yumeji style beauty. My younger sister came back from school in Takebayajo during such days and would say, brother, someone just called me a Yumeji style beauty on the street in a very pleased manner. Many more accounts of this manner can be found from the early 1900s, giving us a glimpse of how one might witness such girls out in the streets. Yumeji's depictions of beauties and their distinct visual quality provided a tangible image of the Yumeji style that these girls could strive to gain. By the early 1910s, the Yumeji style had become so popular that there was a commercial demand for Yumeji designed objects, and in October 1914, Yumeji established a shop called the Minatoya. This is a photograph of the storefront and the woman is Tamaki, Yumeji's ex-wife at the time. The store sold woodblock prints, lithographs, illustrated storybooks, cards, poetry books, decorated umbrellas, fans, scarves, and clothing, all designed by Yumeji himself. The Yumeji brand was extremely popular. By purchasing Yumeji goods from Minatoya, Customers were able to inhabit the space of the Yumeji style beauty and, in association, become one. A contemporary novelist and painter, Arishima Ikuma, comments The so called Yumeji style beauty is an ideal example for what Oscar Wilde stated life imitates art. It seemed as if many of Yumeji's lovers had actually been taken out of his drawings. It wasn't simply that they had the same kind of hairstyle or makeup, but their mannerism and the way they carried themselves were astonishingly similar. This interaction between the object and the consumer positions the Yumeji style far beyond the confines of his works and into the social realm as a conceptual entity in which the Yumeji style became an identifiable brand. His artistic career, in fact, began with illustrations in socialist publications. Chapter 2 examines the relationship between his illustrations, socialist bulletins, and mass media, which laid the groundwork for Yumeji as he developed his subject matter and audience in his early career. Examples such as this, this one, Shouri no Hiai, Sorrows of Victory, in the socialist bulletin Chokugen, or Plain Speaking, convey Yumeji's underlying socialist ideology and personal affinity with those who lost loved ones in the war. This image here depicts two standing figures, a young woman in a kimono crying into her sleeve and, a, and standing beside her, a skeleton dressed in a man's kimono with a red cross marked on his left sleeve. A straight stream runs behind the two figures, perhaps alluding to the Sans no Kawa or the mythological river that separates the realms of the living from the dead. In this image, Yumeji depicts the woes of a disheartened woman who has lost her lover to the war. Sorrows of Victory, along with other illustrations, reveal Yumeji's intense involvement with the socialist movement 
during the period of the Russo-Japanese War and up to the 1911 High Treason Incident, or Taigyakujiken, when a number of socialists were falsely accused, imprisoned, and executed. Yumeji's illustrations demonstrate his strong anti-war stance and his support for the day-to-day -day lives of the average person. They display a more serious political side of the artist, still little discussed by scholars today. It is the start of his artistic career that led his attention to the common people and their daily lives, as well as mass media as his artistic outlet. This is the end of video one. Please follow video two if you'd like to hear more.